Matt is currently pulling out my line. I'm trying out a new release mechanism with a magnet. Um, hopefully it doesn't get twisted, which is the biggest issue I've been having to date, so I guess we could just wait and see how it goes. But yeah, it's moving pretty well. Yep, it's moving. Like it. Alright, let's pull it in, buddy. Let's jump in, eh? The system is working brilliantly. The kite is just pulling line out. Let's see. <laughs> there it goes. And yeah, the kids are loving it. We've already caught a fish. It's gonna be a good day. The kite is back. We've had one fish already. I'll just show you quickly. I've got two rod holders set up. One's still got the rod in it there. The other one is there. Just gave them a bit of space. Um, so I've got the sinker off the magnet. So that keeps the main line down from the kite line. Um, I don't want the two getting twisted up, so I just gave them a bit of space as well. And yeah, it seems to have worked quite well. We've sent it out three times now. It's out again at the moment, so that one's still just fishing. I've brought the kite back in. Kids are still just playing in the water, having a good time. It's a good day. That all went really well. Ended up with three carway. The kite performed perfectly. Didn't get any major twists or anything in it. It's just a cheap one I got off eBay. I think I paid about $12. It's two meters wide. Um, I've actually replaced the rear spar on it with a wooden one. Because the two piece fiberglass one that came with it was just junk. Um, yeah, works well. And I did end up having a twist on the last attempt just because I used braid and there's a lot of slack as it's going out and it got a bit of a knot in it but nothing major and still managed to pull in two more fish so happy so this is just a basic rundown on how my system worked um i've got a metal paint tin with running a line back to a kite rod which has about 500 meters of braid on it so that holds the tin so I can pull the kite back once it's released the next line is just a straight magnet it's one of those neodymium magnets this is one that they put inside of cupboards on the top so when you close the door it pulls the door closes the last little bit and catches and um, you can buy them at any hardware store usually it's got a bit in the middle for a screw to go through to screw it to the cupboard, but in this case I just tied my knot through it. Ran a hook. Well, I actually had three hooks on. This is just a setup I've made just to show you, but I had three hooks and then a sinker. And from that it went back to the rod I had in my hand. Um, the reason I've come up with this is I used to use, well, I was trying to use that sort of style of release clip. Um, I kept finding that it would get the kite would be pulling it out and a wave would hit the bottle or at the time I was using a bottle instead of a tin um, a wave would hit the bottle and all uh, my gear would just get tangled up um, it all get tangled around the release clip and then when I'd yank it to release it wouldn't release because it'd be a big tangled mess so with this system there's nothing for that to tangle on the whole thing comes away from the bucket and then by having the sinker down here that keeps the line down while the kite line is up and I'll show you a video well you may have already seen that I'm terrible at editing uh, better at fishing <laughs> but I have my two rod holders separated on the beach so it's like this is one line running off in one direction one in another direction and then the sinker is keeping one down while the other one's up and so far I've had no twists, there's been no business, so they haven't been caught up with each other at all.
So it's, it's fixed the problem I had of release clips getting tangled up in the whole system. Um, the line I was using for my rig was actually a lot longer. So this from the magnet down to the first hook was probably two meters. And then I had three hooks about a foot apart. And then I had two uh, spinners. And that was just so the sinker could sort of slide between the two and I could still feel bites. Um, I was using a three ounce sinker. I wasn't using a sand grabber because the first sort of, I don't know, 50 odd meters where it's pulling through the waves, I didn't want it to be catching in the sand and causing more drag than it needed to, so I just used a standard sinker. And it worked fine. There was no big swell today, so that wasn't causing me any problems and not a major wind, just enough for the kite to pull it out. Um, yeah, so that all worked really well. Um, this is just something I'm playing around with because in the past I used to send out my kite with this setup, which I've got about two kilometers of line on there. It's a four horsepower Briggs and Stratton that runs on a clutch and a belt to pull it all in again. Um, basically I'll set up 25 hooks on that and that would pull, the kite would pull all 25 hooks out. Um, similar sort of setup, it would be attached to a bottle, but there'd be no release clip, it would be a permanent fixture down to a sinker and then behind the sinker there would be 25 hooks on quick release clips that are up here and they would just clip onto the main line and they'd be baited up and they're just because the sinker was holding the whole line along the bottom they're just all sort along the bottom and it would, the kite would be pulling the whole time and that, that was sort of the issue that's why I had to have such a big motor for the setup because the kite particularly on a windy day with a two meter kite the wind would be pulling the kite out while you've got maybe as many as 10 decent sized fish pulling on the line as well um, I started out with a plastic reel from an electric fence reel and that just blew to pieces it just got crushed by the the tension on the line basically so I ended up building a metal drum and just a basic frame with some skis so I can drag it along the sand and yeah bolted a motor onto it so I mean that setup works really well I've had some really good luck with that um, I just wanted to try something a bit different and it's sort of a bit more practical I can chuck my rods in the car quite easily and take this setup out I'll just take it on this little trolley and yeah that all worked really well uh, means I don't have to take a big surf caster. I can just use a boat ride at the beach. It looks quite funny. <laughs> anyway, I hope you've learned something and I hope it works for you. Cheers. Alright, the fish has all filled it up. It's quite nice. Um, I bleed it, so you've still got a bit of that red muscle in it. But the neck is actually quite white. As long as you bleed it, I mean, I used to not really know what I was doing and I wouldn't bleed it and it would come out really almost like a brown colour and it wasn't all that nice to eat so I have some beer um, put down a bit of flour and then I put on some cooking coat chicken seasoning just for flavour bit of salt and pepper and some mixed herbs get a nice hot pan with lots of oil and yeah batter it up Throw it in. My mouth's already watering. I love this. And the beer. And the flour and seasoning mix. And see, they're quite large fillets, but I actually cut them down sort of on an angle to make them thinner because they're, they're quite well fed, so they're quite thick fillets. And the pan is really hot. So it sort of sears it quite quickly and it, it won't necessarily cook all the way through which is, I mean, it's quite gamey fish so it doesn't actually taste that good if you don't cook it right through so I find cutting it into thinner strips and small ones it's sort of like fish fingers really and it tastes beautiful 
Last day better. For that chicken seasoning. Can't go wrong. Beautiful. And easily done. Check it in my nice hot pan. And the flip. Look at that color. Look at that. That's beautiful. Might need a fork. Oh yeah. That's how I do it. Love my cowboy. A lot of people don't like it because of the strong flavour and the gaminess, but if you bleed it properly and you cut it thin so it cooks all the way through. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Yum, and quick to cook. Can't wait.